Welcome back to the Build Podcast with Joe Dow. Coming up, we'll be chatting about Fed rep business, popping out for a pencil, and car chases with Sooty and Sweep. We left Joe on a cliffhanger, 100 foot above Battersea Power Station, recording the Bill's seminal Cry Havoc. As you climb and, and, and you, you get to the top, because uh, a, a dog knocks Mark Warren off, so That's he right. falls, and then yeah. you yeah. you climb up, and it's a stunning performance. You, you're 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 panicking, you're gasping for your breath, and you're saying, "Oh my god, oh my god!" It's it's a it really is a tremendous performance. I'm not just saying that, you know, be be proud because it's not just the stunt; it's the acting that went with it. Stuart had said um, before I went over, you know. We, we want to show the vulnerability of this character. So uh, don't hold on to your emotions when you go over the edge. He said, you know, I'm going to need to hear your voice expressing how you're feeling as you're falling. So I thought, OK, yeah, thanks very much. That's reassuring. I'll try and I'll try and express myself. But it was so terrifying as I went over the edge. He, I uh, screamed so loud and so in such a womanish fashion that he had to redub it afterwards. Oh. And he said, you, "You just sound like you sound like you're way too scared. You've lost all respect for yourself." <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to have to dub that over with a slightly more manly cry, which I did in the studio. I had to kind of hang from the from a, from a wall bar, and because uh, <laughs> because in the real thing, I'd been. Uh, yeah. Really giving out the fear. Oh, big I don't time. blame you. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And is it true? I've read this is an old interview, but Russell Lewis, who writes it and is now the producer of Endeavour and one of our best television writers, had he been an actor in London's Burning, in your London's Burning Up a Ladder? Oh, that could well be true. There was an was that Russell? Was that him? Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I did an episode of London's Burning when I was doing smaller parts before this, in this short period after drama school. And um, I played a doctor who turned up to a, an accident where somebody had, a window cleaner had fallen off. That was Russell. He'd fallen off a ladder and impaled himself on a fence. So they had this really gruesome setup of this guy impaled on a spiky fence with the, you know, the poles going through one end and yeah. coming out the other. <laughs> And then at lunchtime, because it was a, a mock-up, he'd like climb down from this thing, still impaled on a kind of piece of fence, walking around <laughs> having a cup of tea with everybody with passers-by looking at him, absolutely aghast. And I, di I didn't realise that was Russell. That's amazing. That is amazing. That could yeah. Well be right. Yeah, it's an old, uh, in one of the old Bill annuals in your interview, and you, yeah. you, you say that Russell had... Uh, he had signed up to the part, even though he suffered from vertigo, you know, and he was like... He, he did. did. I did remember the guy up the ladder had vertigo. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, <laughs> next thing you know, he's putting you, <laughs> dangling you off Battersea Power Station. So. I think he was vengeance, possibly. <laughs> yeah. Vengeance of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. I think he, owe, he owes you an endeavour, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and another Russell, I mean, it's quite incredible, really, the... the the solid stories you have, but you also had a very famous episode. It's called They Also Serve at Russell Road, which is filmed entirely in the van. And it's done in like a series of one takes. That was tremendous. That was, yeah, that was um, absolutely. Um, it, I think it was um, groundbreaking TV really in terms of drama. Again, uh, um, it was the one about the riot, wasn't it? That's, that's, that's right. The one. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the lightness of the cameras meant that they could go everywhere. And this was a new thing. And so we started the episode all jammed in this van with, I think it was a lady camera person and she was sort of crouching on the floor uh, in there with all the, all, all the guys. And, uh, and then we barrel up to this riot that's starting off and the camera jumps out and they were long takes. I think it was David Heyman. That's right. That's exactly it. right. Yeah. Who was one of my heroes before as an actor, for all the stuff he'd done. So, and this was sort of, you know, he was moving into directing and he was really full of adventure and vim. And uh, one of the absolute highlights for me for, for that whole time, because he was so kind of provocative in terms of what he wanted from you. He let you go further and uh, uh, and re was really visceral directing, actually, and, and was not afraid to use all the facilities they had. Mm. So it was involved huge setups um, 
like much more like a film set than a TV show, actually. And there were firebombs going off and yeah. crowds. And, uh, yeah, it was really amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it took a lot of pressure for everybody to kind of keep their nerve through these long takes. And uh, I do remember that they unwisely had scheduled Jeff Stewart to say the last line of the episode after a sort of 15-minute, <laughs> 10,000-pound take. And uh, so, like, the bombs went off. <laughs> the van was careering around. There were vans being turned over, people being punched, crowds running this way and that way, all in, you know, one unbroken take. And then, the, and then it kind of comes in to focus on Jeff with his last line. And he forgot it. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, sorry, sorry, can we go again? Can we go again? And uh, oh, the pressure. So I, th- I think they may have just uh, edited in his lines of the, as, as an extra cut at the end. <laughs> Fair enough. There was a lot of pressure for him. Oh, it yeah. Was funny. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I went on to work with David Heyman afterwards in Cardiac Arrest, the first series of uh, Cardiac Arrest, oh, wow. which was sort of, you know, that, that, that was my connection where he'd called me up for that, I think, and uh, carried on with his same adventurous style. Yeah. But that, that was a brilliant thing about the bill that you got to work with so many directors, so many good ones, and it was a it was a trialing ground for those guys to uh, safely experiment with, with their ambition. You know, you'd see them coming in there really hungry to to make their mark, and then also the old hands who knew so well what they were doing, but weren't quite so adventurous. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, it didn't always work. You saw some directors come there and kind of. Uh, try something way too cinematic and then you know they'd have to rush it all at the end and do it in a much more conventional way sam miller's also in in that episode in the van and of course has gone on not just right. to direct you in cardiac arrest but have a fantastic yeah. career so was he learning whilst he was acting was he watching all the crew and i think i didn't realize at the time I, mean, I knew sam was ambitious but i didn't realize that he was using the time to kind of absorb it all. And he did that brilliantly. You know, he, 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 he more than anybody kind of um, was a great in his acting and everything and uh, playing the sergeant. He, he was had a lot of presence, a lot of stillness, uh, but he was learning everything as he went. And he seamlessly transitioned uh, into, into, doing, uh, into doing the directing. Yeah, that, that was an incredible thing to see, actually. And, and the sky was the limit for him, still is. Yeah, very much so. As they, uh, as you continue, you know, because you forget, I mean, you, you did whoa, way over 150 episodes. You know, you did a, a long old stint. <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, and then they, they decide to make Barry the, the Fed rep, which was a nice... Yeah. A nice touch. It's a very funny episode. It's called "Man of the People" by Chris Russell, and uh, and you've got some great lines about you because Jeff Stewart's obviously uh, you know desperate to remain. Oh, it's as... funny because Jeff got Jeff got his nose put out of joint. The character got his nose put out of joint so much because he'd been you know Mister <laughs> Fedrat. That was his identity, yeah. and then this young upstart comes in and, t- and takes over. He was he was hilarious actually how he played that. It was really good, really good. <laughs> Yeah, you, you say to him, Reg, we're talking about Federation Rep, not election to God. <laughs> You've got another lovely one where he's been trying to discredit you by, uh, by the fact that you're a Birmingham City supporter. And uh, <laughs> you say, Reg, I think you're taking this a bit personally. Why drag Birmingham City into the political arena? I mean, I haven't mentioned <laughs> Leighton Orient, have I? <laughs> Excellent. Really good stuff. Was that nice for you? Because then you had to, you got to play a lot more scenes with Peter Ellis and Ben Roberts and and yeah. Well, short of being intimidated, I mean, they were quite intimidating in a way because they were such old hands and they had been in theatre and rep and TV for many years. So that was quite for me. I was really hungry to learn from them, and uh, I, I was awe inspired by those guys those guys, you know, from, from a different generation of TV and theatre. And uh, and they, they were real pros. Yeah. Um, so there was loads to learn. However, they were really hard to work with too because they were hilarious. <laughs> they, 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 their ongoing gags were just brilliant. And, you know, it could go from, from serious drama to absolute farce in a second. <laughs> they, they were great, actually. Just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, that, that was one of the nice things about the whole program was working with people of different, gen- you know, I'm not saying that they're that old or anything, but, you know, slightly different generations. of. Uh... <laughs> I mean, they sound like very, very happy times for you. You know, it was a good time in your life. Absolutely, yeah. It was a really unique platform to practice all the things you'd imagine doing at drama school and, you know, growing up wanting to be an actor. And there you are, somebody's putting it on a plate for you. So it was it was absolutely liberating. Yeah, yeah. And so after three years, was it your decision to move on? Yeah, it was, yeah. I'd always been kind of in my head I had a picture of where things might go or could go and uh, as I said I'd never thought I'd play a copper because uh, <laughs> I thought it would be limiting and it wasn't limiting really but I was aware that I that I'd kind of done that uh, I didn't want to get stuck um, and I knew the comforts of the whole thing with being regularly paid and everything kind of m- might make the walls close in at some point, rightly or wrongly. So I think I kind of took my chance when I felt like I'd, I'd had enough of that. And they were very generous. They said, come and do some more, and then maybe. So I did a bit more, and then I thought, no, I really should move on while, while I'm still feeling fresh and strong enough to do that. Because I thought, you know, if I'm older and I'm in this situation, it'd be hard to move. So, yeah, I said I wanted to go. And uh, I think I said... Like Mark Pally, I said, kill me. <laughs> but they didn't. They they sort of left it open, which was very kind of them. Although I never, you know, never availed of that later on. But uh, it, it actually resulted in a quite a quiet exit, if I remember rightly. I think I might have been one of those, go, I'll go out for a pencil. Type <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a sense of frustration. Because, I mean, you, you've got a lot of uh, a lot of very loyal fans in the Bill circuit. And, yeah, you are one of those that, people feel quite aggrieved the fact you didn't get a, you kind of get an exit because your final episode is about you resigning as fed rep that's right they even name the episode on a based on one of your line that you barry feels he's just a mouth and trousers you know he's uh that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get a nice scene with Eric. You say, perhaps I've seen what's at the top of a ladder and perhaps I don't like it. All the politics, all the power mongering, all the budgets. None of it makes any sense when you're out on the street. That's good stuff. Good stuff. What you do get, uh, it's a great line. You you get a nice fight scene out on the streets. A bloke comes at you with a baseball bat and he, he, he says, you've got a stick. Why don't you use it? To which you reply with a classic Barry line, you've got a brain. Why don't you use that? Put the stick down. <laughs> <laughs> I do have my own theory as to what happened to Barry, and, and I, I am of yeah. this audience because it, it, you you did police the streets of Manchester in Sussy & Co. Oh. <laughs> my relatives never stop t- taunting me with that. It comes out at birthdays and Christmases. <laughs> the people have found that video off the internet and... Uh, we were such a laugh to do that. And I think we had the same camera crew, or the same lead cameraman, Rowley, had gone from the bill or was doing a sojourn in uh, Sooty and Sweep. And I think it may have been through him. He said, come and do a bit of this. Oh. And uh, it was so hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> Arresting Sweep, who'd uh, <laughs> gone joyriding in the camper van. And uh, the camper van is like about two, three foot tall. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and, and uh, we had a police chase and everything. And then uh, I think we cornered him down an alleyway. <laughs> and it's got a, it has a sort of, you know, the way Sweep looks at you, this glove puppet. <laughs> it's just kind of deadpan. But at the same time, quite challenging, really. So, you know, I'm thinking, right, I'm going to nick this devil and uh, I had to I had to walk up slowly like Clint Eastwood to the side of the camper van I think it was a camper van yeah. and, and then bend down sort of bend double to put my head in in, in sort of copper fashion and say is this your band sir or whatever it was and and there's this glove puppet looking at you it's completely lifelike and I don't know how many times we did it it was fair because we, we were cracking up and the camera crew were cracking up and and, I th- and you've got the, uh, the 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 guy who does the puppet work laying on a platform underneath this camper van, 
and I thought, wow, I've done some surreal things, but this is really, this yeah. is really out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if I'm dreaming this. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I mean. I watched that live. I mean, that is that is my childhood right there. So this is just gold dust for me. Uh, <laughs> you get some lovely gags. I mean, you say you know the suspect is a great dog with a red nose. No, I've not been eating wine gums again. <laughs> and, Good but stuff. You sell it because you're like he's driving like a lunatic. You know, you're like in the zone. You know, it's like this surreal Barry spin-off. So I love that. I, oh, so Roly Luca because. Uh, Larry Dan popped right, up later right. and, and Graham Cole. Did he? So, yeah, oh, so yeah. there's obviously a. I wondered what the Bill connection was. So, ah, oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Obviously, it was a brave decision to move on. Not many actors can kind of go from. And the three years seems like a good rule, doesn't it? And and it's it's yeah. worked it's work for some, it's not worked for others, despite talented actors. But. For you to land the role in Cardiac Arrest and to have such a strong... I mean, that is still regarded by many as the greatest ever medical series made for British television. Yeah, I, I was uh, walking in a park um, not so long ago and somebody came near me, a lady, and she quoted lines from that character from years ago, from, from Cardiac Arrest. And I, and I thought... Wow, what's that? And she said, "Oh, I was. I'm a doctor, and uh, I recognised you. And uh, well, as medical students, we all used to watch, watch that series, and uh, it was quoted all the time. Wow. And it had questions raised in Parliament because of the issues that were brought up about by it. So yeah, it was um, it was kind of groundbreaking. I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, and the bill had been a brilliant springboard to that." So, yeah, there was a lot of luck involved. Yeah, could easily have not happened, you know. And I was lucky that David Heyman took, was very trusting. Uh, when I met him for that, he sort of, you know, there are other really good actors could have taken the part away as well. But he just sort of thought, let's go for it, you know. You try and see what you can make out of this. And, and actually, on, on set, he was very challenging because we were making some of it up. We were improvising and stuff. And... uh he would say, "No, no, no! I want more than this. Go away and do, and come back with more, better than that." And and uh, that really challenged the young cast that we had there to uh, come up with the goods. Uh, mm. So yeah, so we did three series of that, which was great. Yeah, in Glasgow. Yeah. What a storyline they gave you. Yeah, I mean, I was I was glad to be coming out of a different box, kind of thing as an actor. You know, I really wanted to try something that was. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's a bit arrogant really, but I wanted to show versatility or experiment with versatility and I certainly got a chance to do that. Um, I'm from a medical background, so I knew a lot about doctors and their experiences, but um, the character was very much uh, from out of left field. Uh, yeah, and, and then there was the AIDS issue as well, which was very current at the time and was very serious. And uh, so that was a great challenge to to get to grips with that and you kind of never knew Jed the writer was super adventurous and you never knew what was going to come at you next so that was a brilliant thing to be doing and and so different so I was glad of that and your wife Anna Healy she's an actress and she was in cardiac arrest as well so it was was she was yeah <laughs> she came in as a nurse yeah, yeah. and in fact um the guy, the guy who played the patient in that one who something to do with He's, uh, I think he'd beaten his child or something. He was my best friend from drama school too. So there was the oh. three of us in the same episode. John, Jonathan Maniante. Um, wow. Yes. So that was a that was a brilliant scene, and that was the only filming scene we'd done together, I think, and still the only filming stuff we've done together. But she's very experienced in theatre, and so <laughs> I was laughing at her because I was saying, "You're not focused enough on the set. You're too involved in having a good time with the crew. You need to just look where the lens is. You need to know where the lens is at all time." But then I think she, she overtook me anyway, and she got her own back actually because uh, I had to go on. She was doing a play in Dublin, and the fella she was playing opposite at the Abbey Theatre, he um, twisted his ankle, and the only English guy around because it was an English character who had size 11 feet was me because I could fit his costume. So I went on as her husband at one day's notice with a script in front of 600 people at the Irish National Theatre, which was, I can't tell you how terrifying that was, but oh, she man. kindly walked me through it oh. <laughs> as a, on stage.
stage. So we've only done that once. We've had one bit of filming together and one bit of stage together. <laughs> I think that's enough for both of us. <laughs> well, I mean, my wife and I have such different careers. She's a lawyer. I'm in media. It's a completely different yeah. dynamic. But, but how's it been for you both in what is a notoriously difficult and precarious business? You both, you both of your careers have had longevity and... Well, in a way, we were lucky that we were both in sort of, we both had always come at it from a different angle. You know, I'd always, and actually from the beginning, I mean, I know I was interested in RSC and stuff, but from the beginning, I felt um, at home with TV. So I felt that was always my medium. And equally, she was the same with theatre, you know, and I could never match her with that. So we never tried. So in a way, we were, it was almost as if we were in different disciplines, which has been a really helpful thing. And, And you have another talent in your family in the sporting world. I have, yes, <laughs> indeed. Which, uh, yeah, my middle son, Lorcan, is a rugby player and yeah. uh, he's played for Ulster and is currently playing for Richmond. Yeah, and he was captain of, with his uh, mixed background, he played England at under 16 and then he moved over to Ireland and played Ireland 17, 18. I was captain of Ireland at 19 and then in the World Cup at uh, under 20. So, yeah, he's had a very... Uh, a very illustrious rugby career, which is kind of nerve wracking to watch. You never know how it's going to end each game. Yeah. And it, as they get bigger and bigger, it gets more and more terrifying. So, yeah. uh, but it's got a performance element to it as well, which we both identify with. You yeah. know, where you've got to be there on the day, same same as you have on the stage or filming. Is a nice article about his career where it talks about you and Anna both having acting careers, and it, it describes you as a as an acting heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> he just means fat. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and 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 so now, I mean, you, you're obviously doing fantastic stuff with the voiceover work and the and the business coaching. And if a nice telly came along, would you would you be interested? Would you do that? It would be madness, but I have to say, I would. Yeah, I can't. I could never say completely no. I mean, I don't seek after it. And I and actually, I don't think it would happen, you know, unless you seek for it. I think it's something you've really got to chase, and I don't chase it. But if it did, you know, if it fell in my lap, I certainly would. Mm. It's never completely, never completely leaves me. <laughs> no, well, that would be for for our benefit and enjoyment. Because you're very... <laughs> thank you very much. No, it's thank a pleasure. It's a real, you know, some some actors, you know, I've. I've... I had the pleasure of talking to a lot of you now, and some some people you just enjoy watching, and you're one of those actors for me. So um, it's it's a it's a oh. pleasure to talk to you, and you've very generously given your time for free. And we ask listeners to donate to a, a charity of the interviewee's choice. So is there a charity that you support or is closer to your heart that people could donate a couple of quid to if they feel inclined? Yeah, Macmillan Macmillan Cancer Charity is. Uh... Very close to me, yeah. So that, that if anybody feels like it, that'd be brilliant. And what is your message to fans of the bill who have, uh, you know, could you have believed, you know, it's 25 years since you finished the series this year. Would you have ever believed that all this time on, people would still be discovering and enjoying your work and doing podcasts about it? And <laughs> No, it's amazing. I mean, I mean it's, it's really interesting that it's come to the podcast thing you know, to show that interest in it because podcasts are really the the thing now. I find them so interesting. So that's fantastic that 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 has revived what seems like, you know, a very old thing. You expect the TV to just, the the old bits of TV from that generation to just vanish. So it's great. And uh, no, thank you. And keep enjoying it if you can. And um, let's hope that current drama kind of lives up to that standard in terms of generosity and uh, variation it, it, it was a, such a fantastic platform for technicians actors writers directors it was like the old repertory theater in terms of uh, theater actors uh, but in tv and i i think it's unique it's almost nothing that has come up to that i know soaps have the they have a community but not in the same not with the same adherence to drama to sort of one-off dramas because that's what it was a series of one-off dramas mm. and um I've got to ask you a question. People keep whispering that, oh, yeah, they're going to do it again. Do you ever hear that? I, I do. I do hear that. Is that real or is that just room, the, the, the trees, I, the wind yeah, in the I mean, trees? It's, it's, been a, it's been a rumor now for quite a while. I mean, um, I wrote a book about all creatures great and small, and they've been talking about bringing that back now. But suddenly the rumors have actually started to, like, 
oh no, they're, they're actually having conversations and there's a production company right. attached and things like that. And I don't think it's yeah. got to that stage for the bill. But when the Drama Channel, um, they kind of spoofed the fans a bit because they said they were going to repeat them all the way from the start. They did the first four years and went back to you know the, the late 90s. Yeah. They skipped yeah. 10 years. But it was all over the press and people thought it was coming back and, you know, they, they had Eric and Trudy and Mark and Graham all on this morning and talking about it. And the hunger is clearly there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I I think if they were to do it, I mean, I, I'm a fan. I mean, you're, to me, your era of the bill is, is as good as it got. It was just solid storytelling, but it still yeah. had that mix of humour, which I don't. It, the humour kind of disappeared towards the end. It, it was a very serious right. show. Yeah. And to me, what what I would, I don't know, what, what I'd be intrigued by is if they were to do something like they tried to do with the Tennyson, you know, when they went back to the start. Yeah. And what, what they are mm. doing so well now with Morse, with Endeavour. Um, yeah. I'd be intrigued if they weren't, to try something like that with the bill and actually yeah. go back and, but how on earth do you fill in no. the, those shoes of, of so many? I know them? that's it. Maybe it's best. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just too big a thing. Maybe it's just best left as, 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 a, as what it was, which was brilliant. I mean, something like Cry Havoc would, would stand up today. I, I, you know, it's, you could put that on television now and it would have people yeah. talking. You know, I yeah. I, I think yeah. Um, yeah. I I think uh, maybe if they did like uh, they asked viewers to vote for their like top ten episodes and they did a repeat right. run, I, I, and certainly yeah. you've got yours in the van, yours at Battersea. You know, you, you've got you've yeah. got at least two there which are bound to make the top ten because they're both such innovative television and uh, yeah, and they wouldn't necessarily be any more expensive. You know, that was the thing that was that was groundbreaking about it that they could do it cheaply because of the cameras or cheaper than it would have been because yeah. of the movable cameras and that's got easier and easier i mean you could do it with people with head cams now or you know all yeah. sorts yeah people making movies on iphones these days so uh who knows what you could do absolutely oh yeah watch this space <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am so, so grateful to you, Joe. Thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure for me. Thank you. What a lovely man. I hope you enjoyed listening to that as much as I did recording and editing it. Sooty was my childhood, pretty much. My brother and I would race home from school to make sure we didn't miss an episode. So getting those memories recorded was a thrill. And uh, there'll be more Sooty memories, in fact, in a couple of podcast time as Tom Kotcher, a.k.a. DC Alan Woods, also guest starred in the series after his time with the bill. It seems Roly Luca was making the most of his former Sun Hill colleagues' availability. So thanks very much, Roly. And my huge thanks to Joe Dow, whose nominated charity is Macmillan Cancer Research. Macmillan are here for everyone affected by cancer. They're there to offer support and advice. If you check out macmillan.org.uk, you can get involved, offer help, or find help if you are affected by cancer. So macmillan.org.uk. Next time on The Bill Podcast, we are staying exactly in the same era as we catch up with another legend who joined in 1990 and did three years before a similar exit. These guys deserved so much better, uh, so it's nice to honour them now, even if the series didn't give them a proper goodbye. I had the great pleasure of interviewing a wonderful actor who has some incredible work on his resume and is now enjoying retirement. Get ready for a two-parter with the mighty Nick Stringer. Next time on The Bill Podcast. What was strange was I think a lot of people remembered me from Only Fools and Horses. They would recognise me from The Bill as well, but it sort of, I suppose what it meant was that they recognised me as an actor rather than as Ron Smollett.